Hello and welcome to the Leathercraft Masterclass Tool Reviews. In this review, I'm taking a closer look at a pricking iron from the Maker 4Z. Now this pricking iron has some rather unusual features to it, so let's take a closer look and I'll show you. So this pricking iron comes sent from China in a box wrapped in cellophane and inside is this plastic container with all the essentials in there. Now the pricking irons come with a little foam pad on the end, nothing special. But the pricking irons themselves are rather special. So these are fully stainless steel. So from the handle all the way down to the prongs and even these little Allen key screws or grub screws as we call them here or set screws in the US are also stainless steel. So there's nothing to rust on here. The interesting thing about this pricking iron is the teeth are fully removable individually. In the kit, you get a 1.5 millimeter, so metric Allen key. And if you turn, half a turn to a full turn, you can in fact remove each prong individually, like so. Now each kit comes with two spare prongs, which means you don't have to send off your pricking iron or you don't have to throw your pricking iron away. You've got two extra on top of here. So you can uh, break your prong twice and you still got your eight. So you can also buy more from 4Z, I believe. The prongs themselves are replaceable, but you can also buy different sizes. So even though this is a standard 3.38, if I were to purchase a set of prongs designed for the 2.7 iron, they would be thinner and smaller. So if you like your stitches a little bit straighter, for example, or you're making very fine wallets, but you want a longer stitch for whatever reason, then you can do that. And at the same time, you can order a set of prongs for the 3.85 iron and have slightly wider prongs. Now, as many of you know, I'm a big fan of vintage pricking irons. Um, I'm an avid user of the awl myself. But if you like to punch all the way through your work, then these are about as good as it gets. I mean, the polish on here is mirror polish. There are no machining marks. There is nothing but your own reflection looking back at you, as you can see when it catches the light. So these are very, very easy to hammer in and very, very easy to extract from your leather. Now, the width of the prongs on this particular model, which is the 3.38, we are looking at 1.8, let's just double check that, right at the tip, 1.8 millimeters. So it's rather thin. If I bring it further up, say eight millimeters further up, it is also 1.8 millimeters. So it doesn't taper width ways. The thickness of the prong, so if you're looking at it this way, so the thickness of the prong starts at the very tip at about 0.4, just over 0.4 of a millimeter, and about 10 millimeters further up, we are just under a millimeter. So by the time the leather recovers, you're probably looking at, say, a 0.8 millimeter hole in there. Now these are angled at 45 degrees, and the reason they're angled at 45 degrees is you can do something rather unusual with these. You can remove it, take it out, turn it 90 degrees, place it back in. And instead of a prong going this way, which is the regular obverse way, and going this way into a reverse pricking iron. So you can change all of these into a reverse pricking iron. So if you want to do some box stitching, for example, or you wanted to punch around the outside of a bag and then change them over, into a reverse position and then go around the, the edges of a gusset on a bag, for example, this would be pretty much the tool for you. So if you want simplicity and modularity, so you can change them out from different prongs, you can change them out at different angles, then this is something that's gonna suit you just fine. I have had a chance to use this. I haven't used them in the reverse position so I'm going to try that in a moment with some box stitching, which I'll demonstrate for you guys. Um, I haven't actually 
tried it in the reverse position. So I'm going to see how quickly I can change them around. So I've I've played around with it and I've turned the first few around, for example, just to see how it is. But I have never changed the entire set. So I'm going to I'm going to time myself and see how quickly I can change this iron from obverse to reverse. So change the direction of the prongs. So I've got a little stopwatch here. So all you have to do is like a half a turn to a full turn, something like that. So this again is a 1.5 millimeter metric uh, Allen key, if you're wondering. So I'm going to change that first one. And just always remember which is your obverse and which is your reverse. I wonder if I can do this in less than a minute. No, it's not looking like it. <laughs> I think with practice, I'll get a little bit faster. And just make sure it indexes all the way down to the bottom, of course. If it doesn't, then the uh, stress transfers the little grub screw. Pressure's on, the pressure's on. The camera's recording and the stopwatch is going. <laughs> Got the old butter fingers going. So there we go. We'll stop it at the 20. So one minute and 20 seconds uh, to change it from obverse to reverse. Uh, that's pretty quick, you know, it doesn't require any special jig, it doesn't require any special tools to do. You know, these are so cheap to buy and that's literally all you need. Now in the kit, there's also the two-tooth iron. Uh, I think it comes with it, I don't think you can actually buy them separately, even though you could actually take these out and have a two-tooth iron. But it does come with the two-tooth, uh, which is quite handy, which also you can change it to a one-tooth. So if, for example, you have a, a seam coming together and, you know, using two, one's either too close or too far away, you can use the trick of just taking one out and using a one tooth or single tooth iron to go right in the middle to even things out. One of the very few uses of a single tooth iron, really. Now in the kit, you get two spares as standard. So these are the two. And... It, they're just like the others, highly, highly polished, very, very sharp. Uh, 440C stainless steel, I believe, so 440C. You see a lot of that in uh, stainless steel knives. It's a hard wearing, uh, hard wearing steel. Now he has sent me these. These aren't normally in a kit. Now these are actually the 2.7 millimeter prongs. And they are visually quite a bit smaller. Let's have a look at the width of these. So the width of the 2.7 prongs is 1.1. Well, that's tiny. We have 1.1, and it's the same further up. And the thickness at the very top, which is the, the most practical level that you could smack that through, that is... No, it can't be one point. No, it's just under, or just over one millimeter, sorry, just over one millimeter. So how deep can you prick these through? So we are looking at, eight millimeters. And the standard ones are 10 millimeters. So you can practically, smack these through 10 millimeters of leather and on the smaller ones the 2.7 prongs you could go through about eight millimeters you probably could go a bit further but you'd start stretching the holes over and to be honest with you uh you know when you're getting to that level of thickness you really do need an awl but it's you know really your choice if you are a big fan of not using an awl but using a pricking iron to go all the way through these are some of the thinnest prongs I've ever seen, but they feel 
like firm. There's literally very little flex, just enough to know that it wouldn't snap. It will actually take quite a beating. So going through, this is five millimeters of uh, English bridle leather. Yeah, two hits and it goes through rather easily which is surprising to be honest. That's five millimeters of English bridle leather. So yeah, the very fact that you can switch these around, you can replace them, it comes with replacements. I don't know if they're gonna make bigger irons. I don't actually mind eight prongs to be honest, but I don't know if they would come out with, you know, a 12, a 18, 20, whatever. I'm sure if they've listened enough to the leather craft community, they've come out with something like this. I wouldn't put it past them that they will be interested in making larger irons. So that might be something coming in the future. But the very fact it's fully stainless steel is polished so well and it's made to such tight tolerances. Even when you undo these little grub screws, there's no, if you index it all the way down, there's no play in it. So you wanna keep that clean obviously, but that's, you know, the tolerances are extremely tight on there. As you know, I'm a big fan of vintage irons. I prefer using vintage irons with uh, an awl. That's my thing. But if you are a fan of modern pricking irons and you like the modularity and the ability of this kind of iron, not only is it capable, it looks amazing too. So I like it. I'm definitely gonna use it. It's gonna have, a, it's probably gonna have more niche uses with me, but it's something that I would definitely recommend. Now, if you are interested in getting a link for this, I'm gonna be posting on my forum. So I'm gonna put this video up on my forum, leathercraftmasterclass.com, uh, click on the forum there, and I can send you the link. So without further ado, let's try them out on some box stitching. So this is our box stitching test for these 4Z irons. Now I've marked this side in obverse and I've marked this side in reverse. So I'm using black here, but hopefully with the lights you can see all those prick marks. So I'm gonna try it out now and see how it stitches. But the good thing about this is I can go all the way through with the awl and the angle actually matches up. So even though they're opposing, when they're facing opposite each other, they are in fact a mirror image. So you wanna make sure that your all goes through to the other side. Like so. But it's very difficult doing this because of course the camera is where my head should be. So you will forgive me. Casting over and just pulling straight out to the side quite simple chose black this is the hardest to see <laughs> when your face isn't close enough Under 
So thank you for watching the review on the 4Z iron. If you do have any questions, check out the forum, leathercraftmasterclass.com and click on the forum page. So thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.